welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If y'all are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that you can catch my content in a few different places. I have a tutorial group on Facebook. I have my Drunk Flamingo Glitter group also on Facebook and my exclusive Damn Fancy Tribe where I offer exclusive content, free digital files, discount codes, and group challenges each month. All of those groups are going to be linked in the description in case y'all want to check them out. Today's tutorial is not necessarily a new type of tumbler, but it does involve techniques that I really enjoy and tumblers that I actually really enjoy, but I just haven't made in a while. So we're going to start by making a painted American flag. Then we're going to wood grain it and we're going to peekaboo geode it, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and after all of those techniques are done, I'm going to be using Artistry's Mattify to mat the tumbler. Now, I've used a few different matting substances before and I actually really like this one the best. Um, it did not take a whole lot of scrubbing and it, there's no scratch marks on the tumbler at all. Um, if you guys have not tried Artistry yet, any of their products, I do have a discount code down below so y'all should definitely check them out. So if you guys are ready to see how I created this matte wood grain American flag geode tumbler, let's get started. Alright y'all, so we're going to start with a painted white tumbler. I typically use flat white from Astolium. And we're going to print out some star decals. I will link the file I used. It was from Creative Fabrica. Super simple to cut out. The transfer tape I use is also linked in the description. So we're just going to pick up those stars. This is just regular vinyl that I'm using and we're applying it directly over the spray painted base. If you're worried about the vinyl lifting up the spray paint, you can definitely epoxy before you do this step. Um, I did not wait as long as I should have before I applied these decals. So some of my white paint did end up coming up, but it also forced me to kind of modify my technique a little bit. And I actually think it turned out a lot better um, when I went back and used some silver to distress some parts of it. So the next thing we're going to do is take some painter's tape and we're going to tape off a square around the stars. And at this step, you can opt to use whatever paint you want. If you would rather use spray paint, you can use spray paint. If you would rather use acrylic paint, you can use acrylic paint. I just happen to have this royal blue and red pop of color, so that's what I chose to use. And all of my other brushes were dirty, so I just had to go in with a foam brush This tumbler was definitely one of those tumblers where everything went wrong and I was constantly having to modify what I was doing or switch things up a little bit. Like this particular paint was a little bit more um, translucent than I was thinking it was going to be. But since I was doing a distress design, it ended up working well for me. I did do a second coat as well. So I'm just kind of wiping off all the excess and then of course my cup falls over because like I said, everything was going wrong with this tumbler. So I'm just going to take my heat gun and I'm going to dry this section really quick. My heat gun does have a temperature gauge on it. So I turn it to a pretty cool setting because I really just need the air to dry the tumbler. I don't really need any heat. And once this is dry, I will apply my second coat.
and I am just hitting it with my heat gun again just to give it a quick dry. And then we're going to peel up our tape. And now we're going to take some electrical tape to make our lines. I did want them a little thinner so I could get a bunch of lines on my tumbler, but this is where I messed up because typically if I use electrical tape with my tumblers, I will kind of pat the tape on my shirt or shorts or whatever just to remove some of that tack. And I did not do that this time. So some of the electrical tape ended up peeling up some of that white paint. But like I said, you know, sometimes these things happen. So I like to show you guys ways you can help kind of fix your tumbler. <laughs> And just due to the size of this tumbler, I was not able to get every single stripe on the cup. But I did make sure that at least the first half was in the correct order. The red, white, red, white. So once all your tape is in place and down, we are going to take our red paint and we're just going to paint the lines. And when using the pop of color paint, you don't want it to be super thick. Um, thin coats work the best because then you can apply your second coat really quickly. And I am just going to leave the bottom white as well and just do some distressing. So again, I'm just taking my heat gun on a very low heat, just using the air to dry the paint really quickly. And once I see that most of the shine is gone, that means that my paint is dry and I'm just going to apply my second coat really quickly. And at least I remembered this time not to set it upright on my crooked noodle so it didn't fall. So I'm going to dry the majority of this with my heat gun for a little bit. And then I'm going to let it sit until the paint is completely dry. 
and then I will remove all of the electrical tape and the little stars. So now that my paint is completely dry, I'm just going to start peeling up all of the tape. And this is when I realized, oh crap, I forgot to remove the tack from the electrical tape before I laid it down. But I was already thinking on how I was going to fix this. I, um, you guys see me use the liquid gold leaf really often um, in a lot of my videos. I don't use the silver too much, but they do have a silver that I also really like. And since this was also going to be a geode, I wasn't super concerned with it. But just moving forward, if you're going to use electrical tape, make sure that you remove the tack and that your spray paint is super dry because I don't think my spray paint was as dry as it should have been anyway. I was just trying to get the tutorial filmed. I know, I know. And then I was trying to find my tweezers that were not broken. I literally have like 10 of these pairs of tweezers because I use them so much and I end up ruining half of them. So this is probably the most tedious step is just removing all of these stars. I am just lifting one corner with my tweezers and then peeling the rest of the little sections off with my fingers. So once we get all of our little stars removed, we are going to be ready to start distressing our tumbler. Okay, now that all these tiny little stars are off of my cup, We are going to start distressing the tumbler and I will show you guys this liquid additive that I use. Um, I don't know what the brand is, but I will link it below. You can typically find this on Amazon. Most hobby stores will carry it. I don't have a whole lot left in this jar, so I'm just stirring it with my stir stick. If you have a full jar, you want to make sure that you shake it and mix it really well because the oil and the metallic pigments can separate and you just won't get, it'll just not look right. So I'm going to start distressing with the silver first because I don't want the silver to be so overpowering. I just want it to kind of be in the background. And I'm basically just going to start with going over these silver spots that are already exposed from where the paint pulled up. And y'all can see I am barely getting any of the silver on my brush. It goes such a long way. It's super, I mean, it's a metallic pigment. It's basically a liquid leafing. So it's just like leaf gold or leaf silver, but this is in liquid form. So I'm just kind of picking random spots now that all of the metal silver is covered. So now I'm just going over some spots on the stars. I'm going to add some distressing there as well. And I also use a pretty coarse brush when I do this. Um, that gives me the best kind of distressed feel. And once you're happy with how all of this looks, 
I'm going to distress some of the bottom just a little bit. I really just focus on the edges and a little bit in the center. And I really thought that this was going to fall over, but I was very careful. I do make sure to close this liquid pigment up um, pretty much immediately because it can dry out. Um, it is a liquid. So now I'm just going to pick some other colors that I want to distress my cup with. This is black and wet sand from Pop of Color. It's just kind of like a gray, brown, and then black. If you do not have Pop of Color, that is totally fine. You can use whatever kind of acrylic paint you want. Even the cheap paints you can get at Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, Michaels, whatever, they will work fine. And again, we're using a coarse brush. Something too soft is going to get the paint a little too thick. With the coarser brush, you can just get a little bit on your brush and it will um, really create that distressed look that I'm going for. And there's my train again, right on schedule. And this is another coarse brush I'm using. This one is a little thicker. And y'all can see I just kind of dipped it in the pop of color and then kind of blotted it on my paper towel. And we're just going in and making some brush strokes, really. I always say it's best to start off with just a little paint because you can always go back and add more, but it is a lot harder to take it off or cover it up if you got too much of one color on there. So right now I'm just kind of going around and putting my black in the areas that I want it and then I can go back in a little bit and kind of darken it up a little. And my favorite brushes to use for this technique are actually the little chip brushes that you can get at Walmart, but I could not find them or they were dirty. I actually just got back from Walmart last night and bought two big packs of them. So I will have plenty of them to use for the future. So now I'm taking my smaller brush and I'm just going in to where I already applied that black and I'm just kind of darkening it up a little bit and kind of blending the silver and black together. So I am just grunging this cup all up. Now I'm going in with my wet sand color and we're going to kind of do the same thing. So I'm just going in layer by layer, adding more to it if I need to. Then mixing some of these colors and then grunging up the bottom. 
So I was pretty happy with this. I thought it was already looking pretty cool. I do go in and kind of blend the stripes just so not all the lines look super crisp. Since the flag is kind of distressed, I want the lines to be kind of distressed as well. So this is what it looks like after all of the grunge paint is applied. I think it was a pretty cool distressed look. So we're going to close up all of our paints. So next I decided to add some leopard print because I add leopard print to everything it seems. Um, I had never seen a flag tumbler with leopard print before so I just figured why not. I thought it might be kind of cool to see what this vinyl looked like matted. So I am just applying just a few little sections of leopard print. And I'm kind of applying the leopard print where I know that I want my kind of flag part peeking through. I don't know if that makes sense. So I know where I put this leopard print is where I am going to distress the wood grain and the geode so that the flag will show underneath. And once we're happy with that, we are going to apply our first layer of epoxy. I'm going to be using Artistry's Fast Setting Epoxy. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. If you guys have not tried it, I definitely suggest it. I tried it out recently and fell in love with it. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. There's hardly any bubbles and gives great coverage even after one coat. I am mixing 30 milliliters of part A and B because I am going to be covering a few cups and not just this one. So now that our epoxy is all mixed together, we're going to apply it to our tumbler. I don't mix for a certain amount of time. I typically just mix until I don't see any striations left. And that's how I know that both part A and B are well combined. And once I epoxy all of these cups, I do take my big torch and torch all the bubbles. And even though we're matting this tumbler, I just wanted to show you guys what one coat of that facet epoxy looks like. That coverage is amazing and that shine is even better. If y'all have not tried this, you should. So once that epoxy has cured, we're going to clean up our rim. So I'm going to take a 60 or 80 grit sanding block. I am just going to angle it at the rim of my tumbler and I'm just going to scrub around that top rim. I'm using probably medium pressure. And there's that train again, y'all. I promise it's like every 10 minutes it comes by. <laughs> On busy days anyway. So what we're doing now is removing one to two millimeters of paint and epoxy, just so that when we apply our next layers of epoxy, everything is sealed in really good. There's a good seal, it's not going to break. No moisture is going to get in between the layers, nothing like that. And since we are spray painting this cup, I am not sanding it beforehand because I don't want any of those spray paints to get stuck in the little cracks or the inks to get stuck in the cracks. So we're just washing it really good. 
And you guys can see just that tiny little silver rim that's going to make our cup have a great seal. So next we're going to prepare for the distressed geode part of this tutorial. So what I like to do, if there are certain areas that I want viewed or want to be seen, I will tape them off. So I know for sure that I want this section of my tumbler to be visible. So I'm taping that off so that when I after we spray paint and I remove this tape, I already know the sections that I want distressed. And it also saves a little bit of time when we're actually removing the spray paint. So after our, these are all taped up, I'm going to spray this with a flat white paint. My favorite is Rust-Oleum. I typically use Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte. I think it's paint and primer in one. And then we will be ready for our next step. So now this spray paint is completely dry. So we're going to go in with our inks next. I'm using a mixture of Tim Holtz and Bria Reese. I just use multiple different colors. Um, a lot of these, I can't even see the names anymore because they're covered with ink, but I think caramel, ginger, coffee, latte, and then Bria Reese Brown is what I typically use. And I did find my little chip brushes. These are the only two I had at the time. But basically all I'm doing is going in with my darker color, which is the Brown by Bria Reese. And I'm just going to cover the entire tumbler with it. And I'm using my little chip brush to kind of spread everything around. And then I start to go in with different colors. So basically I'm just kind of covering my cup in the different colors and that will just give you a little bit more texture, a little bit more definition, the more colors that you use. And you don't need a lot of every color, just one or two drops here or there. And I am, you know, brushing the ink in an up and down motion. I don't want to go side to side. And you're basically just going to apply your inks until you're happy with the color that you have on your cup. I do make sure that the majority of my white is covered. And next, what I'm going to do is dip my chip brush in just the tiniest bit of alcohol. I just dip it in the alcohol and then blot it really good. And then I just brush over my tumbler. This will really help the distressing, but since there's not a lot of alcohol on my brush, it won't make the inks run or bleed. It will just kind of remove just the smallest amount of that ink, if that makes sense. And I have to laugh at myself because like I told y'all, this, everything was going wrong with this tumbler. Can y'all see all of the brown ink that is on my table? 
I've done wood grains for years and I don't know why I didn't remember to put some type of paper or something down, but I ended up having to move everything, put some alcohol on there and clean everything up. Oh my gosh, it was ridiculous. So if you're going to be doing a wood grain tumbler, put something down so you don't get it everywhere. I did have to go back and like clean it with some more alcohol, but I was like, whatever, I'm done now. I'm just gonna finish this tutorial and then we'll deal with this later. <laughs> So once that ink is dried, we're just peeling up all of our little pre-taped sections. So I know that this is where I'm going to start my distressing. So for distressing, you're going to need acetone and alcohol. I'm going to start with the acetone because that will remove the paint really, really easily. And then we're going to go in with the alcohol and clean up any of that paint residue. So acetone is really good at removing. Alcohol is really good at kind of fine tuning those edges, if that makes sense. And I try to make some pretty natural shapes when I'm doing my geodes, kind of like splits in a tree trunk versus just large circles or ovals or something like that. I do like the more natural look to my geodes. And if you guys wanna see more videos on distressed geodes like this, Go check out the original Geo Queen, Amanda Hughes. She is the admin of Simply Handmade. She is one of my dear crafting friends. She's super sweet, but she has a lot of videos and her group showing how to do different distress geo techniques. So you guys can see I'm basically just Kind of removing some spray paint around all of the little areas I had taped off and then cleaning up all of the edges with the alcohol and I'm just kind of forming shapes that I like And don't forget to remove some of the spots on the bottom as well so it kind of ties in together. And I try to make some spots skinnier, some spots a little fatter. And if anybody has any tips from removing ink from the exposed epoxy, please let me know because that was such a pain for me. I've never done a wood grain peekaboo before. Um, so it like some of the ink got on the epoxy and most of it I could remove, but some of it I could not remove. I tried acetone, alcohol, um, I could not remove it. So if you guys are struggling with that, I don't know what the fix is for it. What I ended up doing was taking this cup downstairs and since the ink is not going to come off with water, I actually used sandpaper and just sanded the areas where the ink would not come off with alcohol that kind of dyed the epoxy. But if you sand that epoxy to the next layer, then the ink came off super easy with sanding paper. So if you guys are struggling with that, I know that sandpaper will remove those ink spots. So I still felt like this needed a little something. So I broke out my liquid gold. We used the liquid silver on the flag and now we're going to use some of the liquid gold for the wood grain. There were some spots that were just a little bit too white. So I just went around the edges and just kind of detailed this with the gold. 
just in random little spots, just kind of adding some more color. And it does still shine under the matted epoxy, so it kind of had a cool look. And I added just some streaks to the wood grain itself. And I also took my bristle brush and just kind of brushed lightly over the wood grain with this gold. Just very, very lightly though, just to give it a little bit more interest and a little bit more kind of that metallic shine under epoxy. Um, it does have a cool effect even if it's matted as well. So this is my little bristle brush, my chip brush, and I am just very lightly brushing over some spots with this gold. And I'm not getting it on the flag section, just on the wood grain section. And once this is dry, it will be ready to epoxy one more time, and then we are going to mat it. So now that the final layer of epoxy is on, we are ready to mat it. This is Mattify, also from Artistry Epoxy. It comes with these little scrubby pads, and it is kind of a liquid matting compound. And basically, you're just going to squirt a little bit of this liquid onto your scrubby pad and start scrubbing your tumbler. I used a circular motion. And basically, you're going to scrub your tumbler you're going to wash it and dry it. And if you see any more shiny spots on your cup, you're just going to apply a little bit more of this matting compound and scrub it a little bit more until all of those shiny spots are gone. I have used a few different matting compounds before and I do like this one the best. I actually like the fact that it is more of a liquid versus some sort of paste and it does not leave any scratches. I don't feel like I have to scrub as long as I have with other matting compounds. And I think that this leaves a beautiful matte finish like you guys will see. Like mentioned, this is from Artistry, so you guys can also use my code on this product as well. But here is the finished product. I think it left a beautiful matte finish. I think it looks awesome on the wood grain and flag. And here are some finished pictures for you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This cup, even though it gave me a headache a lot of times, was super fun to make. I think it turned out really pretty. And if you guys decide to try this tutorial, please post in the group because I love to see what you guys come up with. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or our Damn Fancy Tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!